obvious. So, that'd be such a saucy photo. <laughs> Imagine that right here. The old two hondo. Please be on here. Chief, let's go. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh. What a sow, you guys. Look at the base. Oh my gosh. Hey guys, thanks for joining us on another week of Midwest Whitetail. As you just saw, I found a really big deer back last week that I have a lot of years of history with and I just cannot wait to get after come October 1st. But in the next couple weeks, you'll see us um, diving into the farm. I've got vacation this week, headed down to Florida, spend some time with family and you know we're gonna get back. I've only got one camera on that farm because I had no expectations of seeing him or uh, getting him back on camera. Thought he was dead. We'll get those new tracks up and we'll jump back to client work. As you can see, we're finally getting rain. That's what it looks like back behind me. Just the other day, we got about five inches of rain down here. So we've been hard at it the last few weeks, putting uh, green plots in behind the Great Plains drill. And man, stuff's really shaping up to be a killer year for this year as far as food goes. So. Things are looking really good in the Midwest. I'm really pumped for it. Season cannot get here soon enough, but for this week's show, we're jumping over to Drake. He's always on Big Deer. This year is no different, and he is gonna show us his plan um, for what's in store come October. September 12th, me and uh, Tyler are out here doing a little scouting this evening. Uh, had a cold front come through this morning, so we're expecting to see some deer out here in these beans. Um, we're at this place that I'm calling the 50 acres, just because it's 50 acres. And uh, I've drove around here quite a bit the past week and uh, actually saw the hitless buck that we've been getting pictures of over here in this little patch of timber. So since this farm is only 50 acres, um, we gotta be really careful about what we do, how we access, how where we hunt, how we hunt, where the wind's blowing. But that little clover patch should be a decent little spot to catch him coming out of that bedding and hopefully six around and we can get a chance at him here this fall. Hey guys, welcome back to Midwest Whitetail. Tonight, uh, Justin and I are at a buddy's farm of ours um, doing a little velvet filming. It's the 6th of August, Sunday afternoon. We have uh, some rain pushing through and it's gonna be colder temperatures here for the next week. So it's gonna be a great time to get out on velvet film. But uh, we're out here on our buddy Skip's farm. We've also paired up with Skip you know, as a part of our land management business that me and Justin started over here the past summer. So over the last couple of weeks, we've gotten a lot of projects knocked out between Justin's home farm, getting all his plots planted. And we've been doing a lot of work on the 50, which is a permission farm that I've had over the last five years. So basically every project on the 50 that we have done this summer is revolving around one deer that has came back and is gonna be probably on the top of my hit list is a deer we're calling Sticks. He's thrown a couple flyers, got a bunch of brows. You know, everything that we've done, like I said, on the 50 so far this summer is gonna basically revolve around setting that farm up for this deer. So um, he showed a lot of daylight activity in October. And so I think we can, we can put that to our advantage this year between all the trail camera photos that we had last year. 
Um, we didn't really have much time to hunt him last year around that time so hopefully this year we're gonna have a lot more time to spend early october because that's kind of the, i think the key uh time that we can get on this deer so so looking forward to getting in up here and uh doing a little velvet filming this is gonna be our first time basically filming all summer so excited for that temperatures have dropped it's in the high 70s uh this rain looks like it's pushing out so should be a good evening we're gonna hop up in here and uh you guys can take a look at what we've been doing here the last couple weeks Father's Day, so happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, all the dads, all the daddies. Justin and I are out here at a farm that we've hunted for the last five years. It's just a real small farm. Um, we've had some really, really good deer uh, core up in here the past couple of years. In the early season, there's one deer that we're getting pictures of already, and he's gonna be a slammer. And I think if it's the same deer that I know from last year, we call him Sticks. And, uh, just a giant mainframe eight and this year if it's him he's got a bunch of trash so we're down in here on the south side we've cleared a trail to just be, be able to just dive in here right off the road which is right up above Stan is going in right here over my shoulder and uh we've got a trail we've done a little bit of tsi we cleared out uh, a bunch of junk trees opened up uh the canopy there's some walnuts in here and some big oak so um, we should be able to slip right in here with the north wind, north out here, going back out here with the west. And uh, that's going to be the plan, so we're going to hang this set and get it, get it done. And we're going to basically be done and out of here other than doing the food plot uh, that we've had for a couple years across the creek. We had a water hole there last year. Just tons of really, really good pictures and video. And uh, just, we tore the stand down that we had in there because it's just, it's too interior. So there's one set that we've got for a south end on the other side of the plot. Got a trail right here, up back over the hill. We'll pop in with a north wind. Pop right down here, right up the tree. Justin's on it right now, so. All right, just got up here, got this stand hung. Justin's down there trimming a couple branches. I think we're gonna have a scrape right off the, the tip of this walnut, right back here. And, uh, this will basically be the trail. I mean, coming out, they cross the road up here a lot and come through the chute and then they go across the creek to the food plot, which is right over here, or they come right down the pipe. There's a creek right here that uh, splits the food plot from us. So this is one big main trail right here. Um, basically with any west, northwest wind, we can cut it back out into this pasture. Probably gonna be more of a morning spot or a sit all day spot um, if we have a deer in here. I don't know about getting in here in the afternoons, but uh, we'll just have to play it by ear, but it's gonna be a sweet setup. Cameraman will go right here over my shoulder and uh, Justin's right here, so it should be money. Brandon hoping Sticks comes back. Enough in here that a lot of this is gonna burn, and like all these, this little crap is gonna be tough. Alrighty, guys, July 17th, and uh, we'll just go ahead and knock this out of the way. Got an elbow last week playing basketball, so probably gonna cut that off maybe the rest of the summer, at least until this, until this shiner goes away. But Justin and I are down here in our food pot on one of the smaller permission farms that I've got. We got one deer in here that we're basically setting all the setting the stage up for we call them sticks been getting pictures of him here last couple months we had him all last year he ended up getting hurt i think and we actually had him right here uh sipping out of the water hole i think he hurt his right front leg or something broke off his right side tons of pictures of him early season so i think that's a deer we're going to jump on in the early part of october those early cold fronts and then this is our food plot so over the past couple years, we've transitioned from early greens to turnips. So I think this year we'll probably do more turnips just to, just to hold the resident does that are in here. This farm holds quite a few does. Um, so it's, it's just a really good rut spot. This plot, Justin came in last year when we seeded it, I think in September and broadcast some cereal rye out here. 
that's basically all that came up after season. It was the first thing that greened up the spring. And the reason that we'd put in this rye, you know, going back to the old Winky state of mind is the poor man's food plot. We can't get any equipment in here. So this rye takes care of the weed cover, grows up, the deer love it when it's, you know, when it's, when it's coming up. But it basically covered up, shaded out all the weeds in here. So there's really not many weeds. It's all dead now. So I think in the, in the next couple of weeks, we'll come in here and burn it. We'll spray it with gly if we need to. If there's some some extra weeds and stuff, then we're then we're ready to plant. So probably do that in the next couple of weeks. Try to get it in before August 1st. But the past couple of years, it's always been like, oh, we got a food plot. Let's hunt. Let's hunt right over it. Blah blah blah. And we've kind of just altered our plan a little bit this year to where we can get in and out safe. We're not going to hunt it very much, but that's probably going to be the kill spot. We cut out a big trail that we can access from the road. Slip right down on the plot with a north or a west wind, and it should be golden. So. Pieces are starting to fall in line here with the, with the stories and excited to get after this buck. So next time you see us in here, we'll be planting. There's a little part where the ride didn't take and we got some bunch of weeds and stuff. So we do have some 2,4-D and some glide mixed up. So we'll just go ahead and spray this patch. Um, everything that's green, probably three weeks before we plant anyway. So the 2,4-D residual should be, should be fine by then. But Hopefully all this stuff will die and then it'll burn up uh, very, very well with, with all this rye coming up. So this place is all CRP that's not the greatest. We need to um, work with the landowner and see if we can't get a replant or at least burn it. If we got the CRP going very well, I think that, you know, it'll just, it'll just sweeten up the pot for this farm. But everything just comes together down here. We've got another pond up here, back up over my shoulder here, and everything drains down into this bottom and connects to this creek that we, we've got our stand on the other side. So uh, right here, at least, it's just a good little transition for them to come out of the CRP back behind me. And then they, they go out there to destination for the night and then work off to the bigger fields. So just an easy spot to slip into. Um, access should be, should be good. So excited to get this thing planted here in the next couple weeks. First night out velvet filming, I've been getting some deer on this big bean field surrounded by nothing but good, really well managed stuff. I have a couple of deer in here I'm looking for in the short 210, and there's one big eight pointer mature that uh, last summer when me and Justin came in here for the first time, we got, we actually jumped that big eight and I found a shed not too far from here. So first night out, I've got some bucks way in the back, some good deer. There's one really good deer, it's real wide. So. Should be a good night. Sun's going down. I probably got 40 minutes left, so fingers crossed some of these bucks work their way. I can get some decent footage. All right, so I couldn't do a closer out there. It was, uh, had those bucks right there up on me. But uh, awesome encounter. That was the one deer that I found the shed to, probably less than 80 yards from where he came out. Um, there's another deer, Big 10, that came out. I'm not sure what deer that is. I'll have to go back through pictures from last year, but I think I've got him late season. I think it was a four-year-old last year. All right, guys, welcome back to Midwest Whitetail. August 1st out here. Justin and I have been working all morning on his farm. Got everything planted into turnips and radishes. Got a couple pots burned off. We are down here at the 50. We've had this plot in here for probably the last three or four years and have had really, really good pictures. We got a water hole in here now. And as you can see behind me, the plot is basically dead. We came in here um, probably 10 days ago and sprayed. So we're basically in here today, just gonna burn this plot and seed it. We've got some rain coming here this afternoon. Um, like I said, it's August 1, so it's time to get these, these fall plots in the ground. So this is gonna be right in the core of the deer that we're calling sticks. And we think, um, me and Josh were kind of looking at trail camera pictures uh, about a week ago, 
and he's got a little notch in his ear. So we do think it's the same deer. He's been showing up on the north side of here uh, fairly regular here this summer. So this spot's basically just going in for him. We don't know what other deer are around here. We know a lot of uh, younger deer got killed last year during gun season. So this is just a little farm that we, you know, we've got one or one option basically, one or two options to hunt this farm. But Justin and I have basically tweaked this farm to where we have one set basically on this plot and it's not really even on the plot. It's just a little bit off. It's over back over the camera here. Um, in a big cottonwood and you can kind of catch these deer coming out into this little bottom hay field. So instead of being right on the plot where we've normally traditionally had the stand, we have a set across the creek that we're probably 75 yards away from and that, that stand back there in the cottonwood is, is probably 50 yards off the plot. So catching these deer going in and out of this plot, it's a, it'd be a good morning spot across the creek, good afternoon spot in here if you can get in with some kind of south wind. Um, but just traditionally a very good farm, um, especially when the neighboring farm to the west is corn, which it is this year. We had tons and tons of big buck pictures in here uh, a couple years ago when the crop rotation was back. So um, last year it was beans. We had a, a lot of decent deer in here too. So all this is going in for sticks. That's the one deer we're after right now, as of, as of right now on this farm. So next time you guys will see us, I'll probably be giving an update on this food plot and a couple other spots we got for you. Well, we've had a pretty eventful evening. Um, no real big bucks, but a couple of nice bucks, a bunch of does. Uh, it's been a really nice evening. The like, temperatures have dropped way off. We got a nice breeze, so it's just a good night to get out and film. But basically, moving forward, um, you know, kind of wrapping up what you guys saw in the previous segment on the 15 with Justin stuff. Um, we got everything planted, everything's ready to go. We're going to get some more cameras out here in the next week or two. I've got one more deer that I'm gonna probably uh, set a couple stand for swoops. Uh, I was super excited to get his photo, I think a week ago. Um, first time since shed season since I picked up his shed. So really looking forward to uh, putting the pieces together on that deer. So we'll be bringing you guys that here in the coming weeks. As far as on the 50, you know, we got that food pot in. I assume it's had great germination. We haven't been down there yet. Justin said he's got great germination on his food pots that he checked this morning. So. Uh, we planted it all the same day, so I'm um, really looking forward to hopefully putting a plan together on sticks. So we've probably got about 20 minutes left. We'll bring you guys whatever else comes out into this bean field, but um, moving forward, getting cameras out, getting a couple stands hung. Got another spot we need to get a blind moved in for that short 210. We've got a food pot sprayed and seeded a couple days ago for that one too, so shape enough to be a good year. Looking forward to it. Now this tree, as it loses its leaves, this branch is going to lift a little bit. Well, it's great to have Drake back with the team. Hopefully he can catch it with one of his target bucks this fall. As you can tell, we're getting some much needed rain here in Iowa. We actually got a little bit of rain half inch or so a few days ago, so it's nice uh, to be getting rain on Nebraska plots and on all the uh, bean and corn plots. Ryan and I have been out at the farm all weekend getting work done. Right now we're actually down at the River Bottom Farm and I'm moving some cameras around, just switching things up, set out a few new cameras. We opened up a few mock scrapes and uh, just trying to get a better bead on what DK is going to be doing early season and uh, also picking out some different trees and looking where I might want to move the blinds. He's always used the same area of the farm every year and so uh, basing my moves on historical knowledge hopefully that we can catch up with him this fall. We're also doing a little bit of uh, overseeding 
into the bean plots. Monster Buck actually makes a line called Overcast of fast growing forage plants designed specifically for broadcasting into your standing uh, beans or, or other crops where you want to put that. So if you guys are in the market in the coming weeks, that'll be um, a great way to get some food growing in, in areas that you want to have a little bit of extra attractant. This week we're also going to be moving over to my 95 acre farm that's a few miles down the road. We spent a lot of time working there this year. I, uh, I picked up that farm last uh, year, late in the summer, and uh, I didn't own the crop. And you know, we ran cameras out there, hunted out there maybe once, but didn't do that much. This year we got in there in the spring and I cleared back all the field edges, cleaned up the CRP, burned the CRP, got uh, corn planted and some of the expired CRP and the, the whole field really is corn. But we've got, um, just did a lot of work out there cleaning it up and I still have some work yet to do. So we're gonna move over there and put in our access lanes with the skid loader and put in a trail system. Uh, now that I've had time to sit and look at the map and kind of think about where I want to funnel the deer movement and how I want to be able to access certain spots. So you guys can be looking for that in the coming weeks. As always, we appreciate you guys joining us and we'll see you back next week. <laughs>